Every day, four and a half billion people eat food made from wheat. It's the biggest single source of food in the world. Nearly 100 billion U.S. dollars worth of wheat is grown, bought, and sold every year. The amount of land given over to wheat production far outstrips the other major crops such as rice and corn. The U.S. government's own figures show that global wheat production is increasing by 10 million tons per year. The wheat I grow comes from wheat that was grown by people thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. And I don't feel that I have the right to violate that for the people who are going to come after me. It is impossible to overestimate the importance of wheat to so many people in so many different cultures. China, traditionally considered to be a rice-eating society, actually tops the global league tables of both wheat production and consumption. The thing I like the best is harvest time. And, and that harvest, that meat coming in, that, that, that quality product that I know is, is, is going to be utilized to feed people, um, this, is, this is what farming is about, because certainly there are better ways, easier ways to make a living. Wheat is an essential ingredient in hundreds of foodstuffs. Bread, pasta, couscous, noodles, cakes, cookies, pizza, even beer. But for most people, wheat simply means one thing, their daily bread. From the sliced white loaf to the bagel, from the chapati to the baguette, bread is one of life's essentials. Certainly bread through the ages has been the most staple part of our diet. In many countries, or in the vast majority, it's still a staple diet. And it's a very dangerous product to mess about with. Nations have fallen for the, this bad quality of the bread in the past. And uh, they've been built on the strength of it. Wheat is, like worldwide, a very, you know, it's your daily bread. Eh? This, is, this is your crop that the whole world has been living on compared to say maybe rice in some parts of the world but bread in, in, in this part of the world in Europe especially is a very important crop. We've been growing wheat for centuries since the time of the pyramids without Roundup and without chemicals and without commercial fertilizer shall we say. Between them Canada and the United States grow nearly one-fifth of the world's wheat second only to China. Half of the U.S. and three-quarters of the Canadian wheat harvest is shipped abroad. Europe, Japan, and Southeast Asia are the main export markets. If, for whatever reason, these countries stopped importing North American wheat, prices would plummet and already hard-pressed farmers would be squeezed even further. Basically, there will be a real problem in segregating GM wheat from non-GM wheat. So there will be many countries that will uh, shun away from all Canadian spring wheat if we introduce GM wheat into the country, you grow it commercially. So who would put at risk the wheat that billions depend on for their daily food? Who would jeopardize the livelihoods of thousands of North American wheat farmers? Who puts money before food and environmental safety? And who, against all the evidence to the contrary, is trying to convince farmers there's a market for genetically engineered wheat? Monsanto, that's who. Uh, I feel it's, it's absolutely incredibly uh, atrocious to see what's happening with companies like Monsanto. There's so many aspects of what's happening that point to the fact that they're, they're just doing this without any proper regard. And to me, that's as far as uh, corporate uh, stewardship would be concerned. You know, it's obviously not on the books for a company like Monsanto. They don't have any proper regard. For their fellow man. Genetically engineered foods could pose problems for human health. Experts are concerned about the possibility of antibiotic resistance, the creation of toxins, and nutritional changes. In the case of GE wheat, health risks could potentially be far greater because of the vast number of people who eat it in their daily diet.
We have these large corporate entities that are doing all this genetic modification who want to force it down upon us, and uh, we're the ones that will pay the price. These huge greenhouse complexes in St. Louis, Missouri, contain some of the most closely guarded secrets in the biotech industry. Monsanto has spent more than a decade and tens of millions of dollars developing Roundup Ready wheat. The company is so proud of their product, they won't disclose the location of field trials. So secretive that they refuse to be interviewed about it for this film. Perhaps not so surprising, given the dubious track record of other GE crops like soybeans, corn, and canola. Once you bring in this wheat or with, it, with a genetic modification, a gene genetically engineered wheat, it's there forever. I mean, there's no calling it back. It might not be long before the genie is out of the bottle. Monsanto has recently filed for government approval to grow Roundup Ready wheat commercially in both the U.S. and Canada. If that approval is granted, genetically engineered wheat could be growing all over North America in just two or three years. There is a regular market in countries like the EU for their high quality wheat and uh, it's very likely we will lose those markets, particularly for organic wheat, for example, if in fact we introduce uh, GM products in, or GM wheat into this country. European consumers have already made their feelings felt about genetically engineered food. Millers, supermarkets, and food manufacturers recognize this and maintain a strict ban on any GM ingredients. We take a very pragmatic view at the moment, and the British consumer does not want a GM loaf and is not prepared to accept GM ingredients. Therefore, we won't have GM ingredients. For organic farmers in North America, the introduction of Roundup Ready wheat would spell disaster. They're already reeling from contamination by other GE crops, notably canola, soya and corn. The tiniest trace of Roundup Ready wheat would be enough to make an organic miller or baker look for alternative supplies. Canada is seen as a very pristine supplier of product to the organic market. Uh, definitely one of the top suppliers in the world, especially for bread wheats. And for, you know, for us to jeopardize that uh, relationship for something that uh, at this point in time is unregulated seems to be a bit of a travesty in my eyes. And it's not just organic farmers who will lose out if Roundup Ready wheat is grown commercially. Conventional wheat farmers are also worried. Something that like seeds are really are the commons. They've been, they've been part of a, an exchange amongst farmers for, for a, a number of millennia. You know, the corporate world, their, their business strategy, they're appropriating that entire history of wheat and they're patenting it and they're taking possession of that and this is, this is the commons. This is something that should be freely exchanged amongst farmers, amongst researchers. The economic situation in North Dakota right now is bleak without genetically modified wheat. If it's introduced prematurely, if it's introduced without certain safeguards in place, it will be a crushing, crushing blow to our economy. Farmers are used to fighting their own battles against drought, hard winters, disease, poverty, and bureaucracy. Now they're gearing up for what could be the biggest fight of all. It's not just about a new genetically engineered crop. It's not just about farmers being able to sow, harvest, and sell their own wheat without interference. It's about the right of all of us to eat good quality, uncontaminated food without worrying what might be in it. It's about the bread of life.